Hi guys. So we are now trying to prove this theorem. It says some lottery P is first order stochastically dominating Q if and only, so this is an if and only statement, for all, all, for all price levels X, the G of P X, the likelihood, the probability that lottery P is going to give you a price at least as high as X should be greater than or equal to the probability that uh, you know, lottery Q is going to give you price at least as high as X. All right. So uh, what I'm going to prove first, I'm going to ignore the second part. I'm going to f uh, prove the following statement. If G of P X greater than or equal to G of Q X, if uh, for all X, this is true, well, then uh, uh, P first order stochastically dominates Q. All right, so this is what I'm going to prove first. Um, uh, if we have time, I'm going to prove the uh, second part, meaning P D one Q implies uh, this inequality. All right, so let's first, therefore, assume that for every X, G of P X is greater than or equal to G of Q X. So what we need to show is the P is first order stochastically dominating Q. By definition, that means expected utility of P is greater than or equal to expected utility of Q for all increasing uh, von Neumann Morgenstern utility function U. Remember? Okay, so that means I need to calculate the expected utility of P and expected utility of Q and need to compare them. To make this comparison easier, uh, I am going to write expected utility of P as follows. Well, that's not obvious, obviously. Uh, it, it requires some thinking. But let's see uh, how do we get this uh, uh, sort of thing uh, from expected utility of lottery P. So first of all, what is expected utility of lottery P? Well, as standard, it is K from 0 to N. I'm assume oh, by the way, let's suppose for simplicity that P and Q have finitely many prizes in their support. Okay. Uh, this is again for technical simplicity. And let's suppose all X0, X1, X2, all the way up to Xn. These are all the prizes that are in the support of P and Q. All right. So, and let's suppose that I can rank those prizes, X0 being the, low, uh, the smallest prize, X1 is the highest prize, Xn is the, uh, the, X1 is the second highest prize, Xn is the highest prize. Um, well, here you may say, what if some of the prizes are equal? Well, that's fine. I mean, uh, trust me, it, it doesn't really change uh, the, the, the proof, uh, meaning this assumption is without loss of generality. Remember, the prizes are in the real line. And, you know, given that we have finitely many prizes, I can rank them from the lowest to the highest. And let's suppose that no two prize, uh, prizes are the same without loss of generality. Okay, so given that um, an expected utility of lottery P is going to be a finite sum, uh, from 0 to n, k from 0 to n, p of xk, this is the probability that uh, prize uh, xk is going to uh, be given in lottery p, times the utility of prize xk. Some of those p xks might be 0, right? Uh, meaning the, the, these two lottery p and q may not, uh, I mean, their support doesn't have to be uh, uh, include the same uh, prizes. Maybe P is on the right of Q. So that means so for smaller prizes, P is zero. For larger prizes, P is positive. All right. So, um, but nevertheless, this is how we calculate the expected utility of lottery P. So this guy is in fact, uh, this is sort of a, a subclaim, is equal to this thing. All right. So what is this thing? Well, it says X, oh, this is X utility of X zero, I'm sorry. So it is equal to, this expected utility is equal to utility of X zero plus finite sum from one to N um, 
the utility difference between xk and xk minus 1, the utility of xk minus utility of xk minus 1, multiplied by g of pxk. How come this thing can be equal to this thing? All right, so let's first verify it. And then second, calculate expected utility of q and then compare them. But first, how come this thing is equal to this thing? Let's verify it. Hmm, well, first off, what is g of p x k well g of p x k remember the probability that the price is going to be higher than or equal to k so this is p of x k plus uh, x k plus p of x k plus one all the way to plus p of x uh, n right uh, so you get the idea hmm. so now what i'm going to do is the following so this is equal to, right, I'm verifying, is this really true? So this is equal to u of x0 plus, so k is starting from 1, right? So what happens when k is 1 here? Well, it is g of px1. Hmm, so what is g of px1? It's the following guy, uh, p of x1 plus p of x2 plus all the way p of xn. All right, so I multiply this by u of xk equals 1, so u of x1 minus u of xk minus 1, so u of, oops, x0. All right, plus I'm going to do the same thing for k equals 2. So what is g of px2? It's px2 plus px3 plus all the way to pxn, all right? times u of x2 minus u of x1, right? So you got the idea, I believe. If you didn't, well, do it for k equals 3, k equals 4. You'll see the trend. And then that means when I do it all the way to n, so this is g of p x n, and it's just p of x n. I know that. Times... Um, u of xn minus u of xn minus 1. Okay, very good. So what do I have here? I have um, the following. So when I look at this, so what I have is, uh, let's, let's open this up. So this is u of x0 plus, so I have p of x1 multiplied by, uh, well, okay, so Let's separate them, okay? So I have this guy, so p of x1 plus p of x2 plus all the way to p of xn times u of x1, right? And then I have minus the same thing, p of x1 plus p of x2 plus all the way p of xn uh, times u of x0, okay? Uh, so this is multiplied by all this, and this is multiplied by all this. Uh, well, same thing for the others, right? So here I have uh, p of, in a parenthesis, p of x2 uh, plus p of x3 plus all the way p of xn. Uh, you're going to see some trend there multiplied by u of x2 minus another big parenthesis. Uh, p of x2 plus p of x3 plus all the way to p of xn uh, multiplied by u of x1. Hmm. Okay, so uh, by the way, it, it continues, but because I don't have uh, a lot of space, I'm going to skip them for now just to see a trend. So here, remember, I have this minus terms and, you know, u of x1s here. So they will certainly cancel out, right? px2 times ux1 here, it's plus, but px2 ux1 minus. So this px2 and this px2 will cancel out. px3, px3 will cancel out. Pxn, pxn will cancel out. So basically, this entire term canceled out. What only remained here is u of x1 times p of x1. Clear? Very good. Uh, what else? Uh, what else? What else? Well, I have here p of x2, p of x3, p of xn. But remember, from the third step, I'm going to have minus of this term. And px3, px4, px n, they will all cancel out. 
You see what I mean? So therefore, the, the only remaining thing we are going to have here is uh, u of x2, p of x2. All right? Clear? Very good. So basically, that's going to go till, uh, till where? Till this guy. So p of xn, u of xn, minus u of xn, minus 1. But before that, I have, uh, maybe you, you need to write this p of x n minus 1 multiply oh um, plus plus p of x n this is multiplied by u of x n minus 1 minus u of x n minus 2 but this u of x n minus 2 guy will be cancelled out and this u minus x n minus 1 guy is going to be cancelled out uh, uh, with this guy Okay, px, uh, pxn. So what I'm going to have basically here at the very end, uh, p, uh, pxn, uxn. Okay, so that means this entire thing is equal to, let me clear all this, um, u of x0 plus uh, p of x1, u of x1, plus p of x2, u of x2, plus all the way up to p of xn, u of xn, all right? But don't forget, I also have this, all right? So this, uh, unfortunately, did not cancel out anywhere. So what is this equal to? This equals to uh, minus p of x1 plus p of x2, plus all the way p of xn uh, times u of x0, right? Hmm, well, is this really equal to this? Not yet, but we are very close. So I have u of, u of x0 term here, and I have minus uh, u of x0 multiplied by this probability. Remember, u of x0 is in, in fact multiplied by one. So basically, if you take u of x0 parentheses, that's going to be 1 minus px1 minus px2 minus all the way up to pxn. So what does that mean? Remember, there are n plus 1 prizes. And so the probability of px0 is in fact 1 minus px1 minus px2 minus all the way up to minus pxn, right? This is what lottery means. The summation of all the probabilities must add up to 1. So therefore, this u of x0 minus this term is nothing but px0 times u of x0. Okay? Uh, plus p of x1, u of x1. You got the idea p of xn, u of xn. But you know what? This is nothing but summation k from 0 to n, p of xk, u of xk. And so it's exactly equal to the expected value, expected utility of lottery p. Okay? Very good. So once I establish that this thing, the expected utility, so let me clear this. So once I establish that the expected utility of lottery p is equal to u of x0 plus this weird thing, I can write, so I don't have any question mark here because I verified that it is true. What about expected utility of lottery q then? Well, with exactly the same logic, it should be u of x0 plus summation k from 1 to n g of q xk u of xk minus u of xk minus 1, right? Remember, I want to show that expected utility of p is greater than or equal to expected utility of q. I already assumed this. So I know that for every x, g of px is greater than or equal to g of qx. So now um, I basically compare this thing, 1, and this thing, 2. U of, zero, U of x0, U of x0, they're common, so they're the same. Here I have finite sum. 
u of xk minus u of xk minus 1. So basically I am multiplying those probabilities with same, uh, so these are real numbers, positive, negative, doesn't matter, but the same positive number, uh, same real numbers. So I am multiplying those probabilities with same numbers. So can I say this sum is greater than this sum or equal to? Yes, if this is true, right? If gpxk, right, for every x is greater than or equal to this, well, then this sum must be greater than or equal to 2. Meaning, I can say because of g of px greater than or equal to g of qx for every x, uh, 1 is greater than or equal to 2. Equivalently saying, expected utility of p is greater than or equal to expected utility of lottery q. So hence, I proved the first part. Uh, if this is true, then P must be strictly up, I'm sorry, first order stochastically dominating Q. Next is assuming that P is strictly dominating, uh, first order stochastically dominating Q, and then show that G of PX must be greater or equal to G of QX. I'm going to skip this step, but it's easy to prove it by contradiction. But again, I'm going to skip it. All right. So that's how we prove this theorem. So the lesson we should learn from this theorem is that uh, you don't really have to worry about all increasing utility functions. All you have to do is just calculate those G parameters for each lottery and compare them for every X. As simple as this. Uh, to, to, to basically see or understand whether P or Q is uh, stochastically first order stochastically dominating the other.